Hey everyone, this is Dr. Sullivan. I hope this video on damage and repair in the peripheral nervous system helps you to understand this particular process. The nervous system has very limited capacity for regeneration and repair. Uh, in the central nervous system, you, we lack Schwann cells, and Schwann cells are the neuroglia that are necessary for the damage repair to take place and we don't have that in the central nervous system. So that's one of the reasons why we have very limited repair in the central nervous system, if at all. The other thing is astrocytes, which are neuroglia found in the central nervous system, astrocytes are very rapidly reproducing neuroglial cells. And what happens is if there is damage in the central nervous system, often the space that is created by the damage is filled with astrocyte scar tissue. And because they, they just produce so quickly that they get in the way of the, the pieces, the damaged pieces, getting back together. So keep that in mind that what we're talking about really is the peripheral nervous system. Uh, repair in the central nervous system is, is, is not really happening. Okay, so let's take a look at um, what we're really looking at here in terms of the damage and repair. So what's required is a neurolemma. And the neurolemma is really the plasma membrane of the Schwann cell that is wrapped around the axon of a peripheral neuron. A peripheral neuron actually has a pretty decent chance of repairing itself if the damage is small, if the laceration in the axon is clean, and the pieces are still fairly close together. Now, we need to have a myelin sheath. We need to have Schwann cells for repair. So keep in mind that this repair is only happening in the axon. If the body of the neuron or the dendrites of the neuron are damaged, they do not repair themselves. So we need to have an intact neurosoma or neuron cell body. And one of the reasons for that is that the first action in the repair process is that missile bodies inside the cell's body are going to start to break down and spread themselves out throughout the, the neuron cell body. Now, nissel bodies or nissel substance, what it's sometimes called, is basically granules of rough endoplasmic reticulum. And this rough endoplasmic reticulum also has um, free ribosomes studded throughout it. And as we know, the ribosomes and the rough endoplasmic reticulum are instrumental in protein synthesis. So if we're gonna regenerate a damaged axon, we need to be synthesizing proteins because that's what it's gonna to take to rebuild this structure because we know that proteins are the structural basis for everything in our bodies. So the second stage of what happens is that the part of the axon that is distal to the injury site starts to degenerate and breaks down inside the neurolemma, within that neurolemma. So the distal part of the axon isn't going to reconnect with the proximal part of the axon. What happens is we're going to break that piece down completely and rebuild it from scratch. We don't just heal the two sides back together. Uh, so we call this kind of degeneration, the degeneration of the distal axon piece, the distal fragment, is called Valerian degeneration. The next step is that the segment of the axon that is proximal to the injury site also starts to break down, but only back to the next node of Ranvier, and also only within that neurolemma. So that's important too. We call that retrograde, which means backwards, degeneration. Retrograde degeneration is the degeneration of the proximal fragment of the damaged axon back to the next node of Ranvier. The next step, which is step four, shows us that the neurolemma forms what's called a regeneration tube surrounding the space where the degenerated axon used to be. Finally, the regeneration tube guides the axon through regrowth all the way across the injured area from the most proximal node of Ranvier relative to the injury site, 
all the way down to where the axon terminals were, including rebuilding the axon terminals. So all of that old axon that all re degenerated after the injury is all replaced by new, fresh axon. Now, if the injury gap is really large or jagged, or if uh, the Schwann cells are, are too damaged themselves to form a regeneration tube, then this isn't going to happen. And as we know, a lot of times nerve damage is irreversible. And that's because the conditions really do need to be perfect for this regeneration to occur. Now, keep in mind that also what you're going to see is during the regeneration process, anything that was innervated by that neuron, if it's a motor neuron, for example, anything that was innervated by that motor neuron is going to start to atrophy or shrink like a muscle cell or a gland. They're not going to function while this neuron is regenerating, but they will come back after the innervation is reestablished. So once we reestablish the innervation to those target cells, the muscle cells will get stronger again, the glands will become functional again, etc. And that is basically it. That's how uh, neurons regenerate or repair themselves in the peripheral nervous system. It's different in the central nervous system. There is actually, um, in the central nervous system, instead of repairing damaged neurons, you can actually replace damaged neurons with new neurons. We call that neurogenesis. So in the central nervous system, we can create new neurons to replace old damaged ones. Uh, and that does happen sometimes. Okay, so I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. And um, I will see you next time in class.